Hey, so I'm making this game in Action Script 3, right? And um, I had this problem with the walls. They would come up when you go past them. So, in the hope that some of you have this problem too, I'd like to show you what I did to fix this. Here's what it looks like fixed. Okay, looks good. Nothing's wrong. You know, all the walls are at the right depth and everything. Go behind them, in front of them, whatever. So, to start off, what's the problem? What's the underlying problem? Well, the way I did it was that I swapped the depth at whatever the wall's Y position was. And that would be where this is, the little cross. That's called a registration point. So my registration point was at the bottom of every wall, the bottom left of every wall, to be precise. Um, you can see here, there, you just click on it and it'll show you. So basically, let's say your player is right here. I'll make a, I'll make a circle to show you. Or you know what, I'll just drag the player on. Okay. So that's your registration point. That's where you get swapped at. So you're here, and this wall and you work fine because you your Y position is greater than this wall's Y position. Oh, sorry, the player was out. Okay, so here the player here, and the wall is here. I hope you can see this. I hope it fits in. Um, so your Y position is greater than the wall's Y position. So you get swapped in front of the wall and that looks fine and then you go behind it and then it looks more like this and it's terrible and you know really it's not even the horizontal walls fault it's these walls because these walls are made so that when you're on this side then it's underneath you and since usually the depth is down here at the registration point, I have to change it. And the way I did that was I made the depth one less than your depth. And that made this pretty bad because as soon as you got up here, you know, you're still in line with this wall. You're not up totally above it yet. And this wall is supposed to be in front of you, but this wall gets the depth right where your depth is. So that gets pretty messed up because then this ends up being on top of everything. All right, so great, fine. How do we fix it? Well, you just make a tree. I mean, it's really not all that complicated. You get one wall. You don't need to see the code. I'll show you the code later. Let's um delete some of this extra stuff. So, you get these three walls, right? Um, so you know when you're here, this wall and this wall are under this wall and this wall is underneath you. And when you're over here, this wall on this wall under this one, but y both of these walls over you. So how do we do that? Well, obviously these walls are underneath this main one all the time. No matter what, these walls are underneath you. And so really, these wall depths depend on this one. And that's how it should work, not on their own. So then I make a tree. I say, okay, this one has this wall and this one underneath it. This one has nothing underneath it. And then this wall has this wall underneath it. And this wall has this wall underneath it. Great. So then instead of going through every single wall through a simple for loop, I say go through the top of each tree. So this would be the top, well not this one, this would be the top of the tree and 
this would be the top of the tree. This wall here. Um, just show you this wall has this wall and that wall has this wall. So it goes to the top of the tree and it says, okay, now get your depth. What would your depth be depending on the player's position? And then it gets the depth. Okay, so this wall is totally set now. Now it goes to the first wall underneath it, this one. And then, you know, it gets the depth and it starts the depth off at the Y position. So now if this Y position is greater than whatever depth we set this at, then we need to just set this depth, the under, the wall underneath it, we set that depth to 0 0.01 under whatever depth this is. No questions asked. Um, we do 0 0.01 because, I don't know, I'm just kind of paranoid of other walls sharing the same depth. Because if I just did minus 1, you know, I, I don't know what could happen, but be totally safe just a small number underneath. 0.01 is perfect, I think. So, um, yeah. So if any wall is over this wall, then it just set those wall sets those walls underneath the top wall. And that's really all I do for each one. Let me show you the code because there were some uh, weird cases that I had to do as well. So here, I make the walls, I tell them who's underneath, and I put into the array the top of the trees. So in here, wall attachment, that's each of the ones you just saw. Um, I go through each one underneath, I get their depth like I regularly, regularly would, and um, yeah, you can read the comments, I guess. So if it's not even above it, you don't even have to bother because it's already taken care of. If it is above it, but um, what is this? <laughs> and I did this a uh, couple hours ago, so kind of out of it. Hey, <laughs> um. I uh, made a little adjustment here. I had an extra line. So, if the wall is no, sorry. If the game, if the game's player is above your wall, then we can just say that wall is right under us because we don't need to check for the player. There's nothing special going on. If, on the other hand, we're underneath our wall, underneath us. Oh, sorry, let me rephrase that. If we are underneath the walls that we should be on top of, then we can do these checks. If we're slanted to the left, this is slanted to the left. This wall is slanted to the left, and this wall is slanted to the right, both of these walls. I'm saying it to the right because when the player is on this side, then these this wall should be on top of him. When he's on our left side, the wall should be behind him. And opposite for here. So that's pretty simple. Um, if we're slanted to the left and the wall underneath us is on our left, then we need to be right above the wall. If we're slanted to the right and our, the wall underneath us is on our right, then we need to be right above it. But instead of changing our thing to conform to the wall underneath us, we just make that wall be underneath the top wall and um, we tell it that it can't move. It can't change anything about itself this frame. Otherwise, it'll screw everything up. And then this is the place by parent thing that I just mentioned. So if we we set it right underneath us, then that thing should not move itself, which is here. And if it was placed by the parent, then we gotta change the wall underneath us to 
yes, yeah, it's, it's, this is the same thing as this. Um, you reflect, you refresh everyone beneath you, and you go down through the tree, telling everything else to update. And then, of course, you know, you make sure you get the depths down. So, <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty bad explanation, huh? But um, that's basically it. There's nothing else to it. Bye.